So there are many different causes of liver disease. And what you can see here are um, sort of the various categories of causes. Now, I would say worldwide um, that alcohol uh, is probably one of the common causes, uh, commonest causes of chronic liver disease. Um, and then what is probably going hand in hand with that now is fatty liver disease. So that's in um, individuals who have um, high BMIs, so they're, they're overweight, they are diabetic, uh, have high blood pressure, have high cholesterol. Uh, and putting that all together, that's thought to be under the umbrella term of uh, non-alcohol related fatty liver disease. Now, depending on where you live in the world, uh, other conditions uh, or other causes can be more likely. So hepatitis B, hepatitis C are common bloodborne viruses which can cause chronic liver disease. Now, we have a global population now, global community. So um, when we're looking for causes, we don't necessarily think, well, this individual comes from a high risk area. We still screen for hepatitis B and hepatitis C. Now, after that, you are sort of going into rarer causes. Uh, there are autoimmune conditions. So that's where one's own uh, immune system is attacking the liver. Um, so one of these conditions is called autoimmune hepatitis. Uh, and then there are conditions which affect the bile ducts. So PBC stands for primary biliary cholangitis. And this is an autoimmune condition where the small bile ducts are affected uh, and then there is a condition called PSC, uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis, where the large bile ducts, the tubes that drain the liver, are affected. Now, um, so moving to sort of the, the left-hand side of the slide, certain medications, if used for long periods of time, can cause uh, liver disease. There can be genetic causes, congenital causes. And again, these are more likely uh, to occur in younger adults because um, they're born with the condition and they manifest themselves quite commonly, um, you know, earlier on in uh, sort of in life. Um, there are blood disorders, again, where potentially the blood is uh, too thick and it clots. So the main blood vessel either sort of entering the liver or exiting the liver can become blocked. Uh, and then in a number of patients, um, there is no cause. And this is called cryptogenic uh, sort of uh, causes uh, and essentially you've excluded everything uh, and you're left with somebody with uh, chronic liver disease with no apparent cause. So um, liver symptoms of liver disease can be very vague. Uh, they can be very non-specific and certainly uh, with patients who have very early sort of uh, liver disease. So it can be simple things like lethargy, loss of energy, poor concentration, um, loss of appetite, nausea, even lo loss of sex drive as well. Um, now, I, what I would say is that abdominal pain with chronic liver disease is very rare overall. Um, but if one has advanced liver disease, uh, then uh, the symptoms can be become more apparent. So uh, individuals can become jaundiced. That's the yellowing of the eyes, of the whites of the eyes. Um, one can develop fluid in the abdomen, so the abdomen becomes distended. Um, and then with that, usually there is sort of weight loss, muscle loss, uh, but that's to the extreme. And that's with patients with very advanced liver disease. So when I see patients with... Uh, possible liver disease, um, you know, taking a good history, listening to their symptoms is very important. Uh, but after that, we move very quickly to performing uh, blood tests. So looking for the causes of liver disease that I mentioned before. Uh, so there's a number of blood tests that need to be performed. A liver ultrasound is very important as well, because that tells me about the size, the shape of the liver and surrounding organs, which can be uh, affected by uh, chronic liver disease. Um, and then what we started using more and more of now is something called a fibro scan. Now, a fibro scan is a special kind of ultrasound scan, which tells me how stiff the liver is. And if one has very advanced liver disease, then uh, the liver becomes very stiff. Now, 
after we've put all of those initial investigations together, if there's still a concern that uh, a patient has chronic liver disease or has advanced liver disease, then they might need to go in to have a liver biopsies where when we take a sample of the liver uh, through the side or, or of the on the right hand side of the patient uh, and maybe potentially CT scans and MRI scans. So uh, again, it's about trying to find the cause. Uh, so if you can find a cause, you can treat uh, uh, and sort of start treatment. So if alcohol is the cause of liver disease, obviously, then we need to stop alcohol uh, and remain, uh, you know, abstinent lifelong. If one has a sort of fatty liver disease, which is not thought to be due to alcohol, um, then, you know, good control of diabetes, good control of blood pressure, cholesterol, um, you know, trying to help the, the individual lose weight is very important. Uh, and obviously with hepatitis B and hepatitis C, there are treatments for those diseases as well. What I would say overall, though, uh, nutrition is very important uh, in individuals with chronic liver disease uh, and making sure that you're getting plenty of calories. You're having a sort of a diet that's rich in protein is very important um, and sort of uh, exercise and just making sure that uh, simple uh, sort of uh, nutrients are replaced, making sure your B12, folate, uh, iron levels are all optimized, vitamin D. Uh, is also very important as well. So um, if you can find a cause, then you can take away that irritant to the liver. Um, the liver is very forgiving and it regenerates uh, very well. Uh, but in some individuals, if the scarring and the damage to the liver is irreparable, uh, then it's all of those things that I just mentioned. It's about supporting the liver. Uh, and in a number of patients, we do need to consider a liver transplant. Um, so that's where we take away the uh, individual's liver and replace it with a new liver uh, and then obviously improve their liver health and improve their health overall. That's quite an extreme. Uh, but in certain individuals, like I said, we do need to consider that. And that's where you need to have these discussions with your liver specialist. Um, and see whether that's applicable uh, and whether it's needed or not. So um, in general, I would say a healthy, well-balanced uh, diet. Uh, exercise is very important. As we all get older, we all tend to, uh, to put a bit of weight on, and that weight is usually put on around our midriff, around our sort of waistline. Um, so I, I think exercise and lifestyle is very important. Um, alcohol consumption, it should be within the recommended limits. That's 14 units, uh, one, four units per week. Uh, and to give some perspective, um, a pint of beer, uh, of normal strength beer is about two units. A bottle of wine is eight units. Um, so making sure that, um, you know, we're drinking sensibly, um, if you're worried about any of the risk factors uh, or if you're worried, then, you know, having a liver review, uh, I tend to call it a liver MOT, uh, is very helpful is where we will perform the ultrasound scan, perform the fibro scan, make sure there's no other causes of liver disease. Um, and that's very easily done. Um, and, and yeah, it's sort of just, you know, being aware of what your liver does um, and, you know, you know, trying to lead a healthy and well-balanced life. So um, obviously there are specialists available who will uh, assess your liver, um, who will try and understand if there's any evidence of chronic liver disease or advanced liver disease, um, you know, using tests such as fibro scan, liver ultrasound scan, uh, and performing blood tests. Uh, but there's a number of charities that are available to all individuals. The British Liver Trust, uh, if you type that into um, Google or any search engine, you can find very safe information, how to look after your liver, what the signs are of chronic liver disease, what to be worried about. Um, you know, so I, I think that's a very good starting place. It's safe information, it's reliable information uh, and can help answer some of the questions that you may have.